Data architecture, the survey data model explained going from simple to complex. Welcome to another session of data architecture. Today, we're gonna to take one of my favorite data models. It's a very flexible model that can start simple and grow very complex. And I've encountered it in systems across many, many, many years. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some simple business requirements and we're gonna slowly build the model and enhance it with more and more complexity and you'll start to see where you can take this. So we're gonna start with a simple data model with account and contact. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take the following requirements and we're gonna build on them. We need to record a survey. There are 10, but there can be more growing surveys. Each survey can have 10 or more questions. Each response is scored on a one to 10 scale and we need to record the responses. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna identify the data model and I'm gonna create a reference object for survey. And then I see that we have questions. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a question object. This allows me, instead of using fixed fields, I have dynamic questions. And then what I can do is I see that each response is a one to 10. So what I'm gonna do, I can create a, let's say a global pick list. And this global pick list will be what I can use. So let's put this global pick list, we'll put it off to the side. And then I'm gonna look at, I need to record when a survey is taken. So I'm gonna create an object under child and we're gonna go survey response and now we're going to add some relationships here so a survey response is we got to know who the survey was for that's the contact and we need to know what survey this was for and on here i can have fields such as the date time um, i already know who it's for and i know which survey it's for so now we're gonna have these questions. And this is fun because you need to come up with a child object here and you could just keep going and call it survey response question. And let's expand this. So this is actually where we're gonna know what the particular user answers are. Now I need to know which uh, response this was for and I need to know which question is being responded and then I take this global pick list and this global pick list will now give me the field. But wait, I don't have my surveys linked to my questions. So now I have a straightforward manner where I now have an account, a contact, I have surveys and I can add surveys dynamically I can add questions to the surveys, and then I can start collecting the responses and the response questions. You can then build the actual screen logic to be implemented using either an LWC or a screen flow. So this meets these basic requirements, but we're not gonna stop here. So this is what I consider the bare minimum data model to solve this, and now we're gonna start supersizing it. We're gonna start making it more powerful. First thing is we may find that there are questions that are shared across multiple surveys. And if I start, if I create duplicate questions, I won't be able to have unified reporting. So I might want to create a universal question pool. And so what I do is then create a junction object right here what, and what I'm gonna do is have question and here. So now what I've got is the ability to call this a survey question. Now what's important is some key fields and I'll indicate just a few key fields is now you, this is where I would now put things like the sequence. Uh, so you know what order are the questions. Um, and this way, I now have the ability to use a question 
on multiple surveys, and then I can still get unified reporting. So this is now an enhanced version of the survey. Now, this is a this response system can handle a lot of things like um, very basic where you just need yes, no questions, one to 10 scale. This is where you have a, a, a nice amount of flexibility with this data model. What I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start showing you how you can make it even more powerful. So if we said that this is a question, this question is a one to 10, but what if I wanted to have multiple response sets? So what I could do is create response set, because if I do a global pick list, then it requires sysadmin to add values. So I could create a response set. I could create a response value. And now what I can do is I can link the response values here on the response set. And now I can choose to say that this question is answered with this response set. And instead, of, then I don't need my global pick list. I would just be storing it in a text value. So right now, what well, we have enhanced our model to now have the ability, this question could then have a response type. And that could be things like, is it text? Is it a response set? Is it a date? Is it a numeric? So now we've got the ability to have dynamic, to have the each question have its own response type, which could be its own response set. And then we could be storing over here, I would have separate field values where for response text, response, you know, date, response, numeric. And now what I've got the ability is, depending on the question's response type, I would be storing that in this survey response question. So I now have the ability with just a couple of objects, I now have grown the ability to do that. And I've built this, such this data model many, many times and even long before Salesforce. Now, in a previous video, I had talked about versioning. So the problem you might run into is you want to know what the survey looked like when they answered it, even if it's been changed. So you might create a survey and a survey version. And then this way, you would have somebody take the survey. And when they choose the survey, you're gonna record a version and every time the ver you try to modify the survey, you create a new version. That way everything is safe under the version. So this allows you to grow dynamic question responses and this also allows you to have versioning. Now what I wanna show you is Salesforce has its own survey object. This is one that I've built up and implemented but I'm gonna show you what Salesforce has done. So this is a data model I downloaded from Salesforce, and what I want you to see is the parallels for what we've gotten. We've got, they have the survey subject, which instead of linking it straight to a contact, we link it to a survey subject, which can then be linked to many things. We have our survey, our survey question, and what they've done is they have created this concept called a page. So they put the questions on a page, and then the pages are on a version. There's the version. And what you can also see is they have, there's the survey response and there's the survey question response. So I had actually built these surveys years ago, long before Salesforce rolled this out. And you can see that you head towards the same common names and the same comma common solutions. So this is just showing you that what you can do is that you can follow this pattern anytime you have the concept of dynamic questions and dynamic fields. So I really enjoy that data model. 
because it can start simple with just your survey, your question, your survey response, your question response with four custom objects, you're up and running. Or you can start to add in the resharing of questions. You can add in the dynamic responses. You can add in the versioning and it can grow to whatever level of complexity you like. So hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining Super Surveys. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. And subscribe to YouTube, Steve Tech Arc, and www.stevetecharc.com. Thank you very much.